Welcome to the opening of Australia's leading design event, the seventh season of M Pavilion. My name is Sam Redstone, CEO of the Naomi Milgram Foundation, the team behind the M Pavilion initiative. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land upon which we meet, create and connect across Greater Melbourne, the people of the Kulin Nation, and I pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. And during this NAIDOC week in particular, I acknowledge that also that this land always was and always will be Aboriginal land. 2020 has brought its challenges, but here we are in the 2015 M Pavilion, now permanently placed in Docklands Park. And collectively with our partners and collaborators, we are proud to launch our five month program of free events staged across Melbourne and shared online, accessible around the world. In a moment, Parabinata Carolyn Briggs will welcome us to country. And then the founder of M Pavilion, Naomi Milgram, will share some thoughts about the season ahead before we then hear from our partners and collaborators with messages from across Melbourne and around the world. Then our first M talk, Black Architecture without engagement. Thank you for joining us on this, our online launch, and we look forward to sharing with you our program and connecting with you over the summer months ahead. Womanjika, Marambikbik, Bunurong, Namde, Barupton, Aka, Willem. Welcome to my beautiful home, the lands of the two great bays. My name is Nawi Dr. Carolyn Briggs, and I'm the senior elder and a proud descendant of the Yalikat Willem clan of the Bunurong of the Eastern Kulin Nations. It is my great pleasure to be able to welcome you all here this evening. But it is my responsibility to ensure you have come with a purpose. Womanjika, come, ask to come, and what is your purpose for coming? These are the structures that lie behind just that very word. I do so not only on behalf of my ancestors of the Eastern Kulin, I do so on behalf of all First Nations people on which lands we meet today. The First Nations people across this continent all share a common connection to the lands and waters of their ancestors that has not been ceded from the, from the millennia, despite the dispossession, the displacement, the discrimination that we have all experienced over the last 200 years. These connections date back to our creation stories. For the Yalikat Willem, our creation stories tells us about Bunjil, our creator spirit, who travels as an eagle and by one who protects our waterway travels as a crow. He created the land and where we meet today. He also created the Kulin people and he taught them about the circular relationship that they have with these lands and waters in order for us to be taken care of by the land. We also had to take care of that land and waters in which we did through adhering to the Warungi Bik, the law of the land, our customary laws, much like the laws we live today. These laws dictated how we interacted with each other, how we interacted with the lands and waters, how we conduct ourselves while we are on other people's countries. The Wurungi Bik speaks of three Pacific laws. The first law, Yelanj. It is a responsibility that we have for knowledge. Once knowledge is attained, we have the responsibility to ensure that survival, its continuation, we have the responsibility to our younger generations to maintain that knowledge and pass it on. It is about, it is about that for our future generations, what we say, Yurimboy, which is our futures, our tomorrows. We also have the law of Jambana. 
This law speaks of community, the importance of community, the importance of diverse communities, but also about unified communities. The Yellicut Willem of the Eastern Kulin understood the power of diversity that is within our lands and how it increases our capabilities. It was always good to share our stories, our different experiences. However, they understood how to utilize this very powerful tool. They had to identify a common purpose. What are the things that we all have in common? Finally, the last law is a connection to country or what we may call honouring sacred ground. Paying respects to the past generations. The people who took care of the land before us and the people that have lived and died before we were here. Paying respects to the stories and histories on the land on which we live today. We are very fortunate in this amazing continent that we now know as Australia to have 80,000 years of human history. And it is important to pay respect to that history, not only while we're at work or while we, when we're at home. If we adhere to these three Wurrungi Biks, I can say in the words of my ancestor, Wamanjika, Marambikbik, Bunarong, Namda, Barapton, Atta, Willem. Come with a purpose and celebrate our beautiful bays, Nam, Port Phillip Bay, and Marin, Western Port Bay. So it is about what we offer you, and it's that reciprocity about how we share a lot of things with each other. So it is about the common purpose and these three guiding principles that we adhere to since millennia or since time began. Nungujan. Thank you, Parbanata, Carolyn Briggs, for your welcome to country and welcome everyone from across Australia, Victoria, or wherever you are in the world to this, the opening of M Pavilion 2020. My name is Naomi Milgram, and on behalf of the Naomi Milgram Foundation, thank you for being part of this launch and celebration of M Pavilion 2020, the seventh season of Melbourne's truly unique cultural laboratory. I'm also delighted to acknowledge and welcome the Honourable Danny Pearson, Assistant Treasurer and Minister for Creative Industries, the Honourable Lord Mayor of Melbourne, Sally Cap, and City Architect Professor Rob Adams, the Honourable Martin Foley, whose friendship and support of the M Pavilion has meant so much to our community over the years. I also extend my great thanks to M Pavilion 2020's principal partners, Creative Victoria, the City of Melbourne and RACV. And thank all our major partners from creative, educational and industry to our philanthropic supporters, communication partners and program collaborators. As well as our wonderful speakers tonight, many of whom will offer their much valued voice to this celebration of M Pavilion. And finally, thank you and congratulations to the extraordinary team behind the M Pavilion. With our remarkable and unstoppable CEO, Sam Radston at the helm, each of you has put so much passion into bringing this 2020 program alive. In celebrating the opening of the seventh season of M Pavilion with you this evening, I'd like to quote my very dear friend and the architect of M Pavilion 2015, 
a mandala veet whose magnificent structure I'm standing in now, in its home in the Docklands. In her message tonight, Amanda says that architecture touches on so many, many different aspects of what it is to be human. M Pavilion, as a literal architectural structure, as an ideological space, has always centred on what it is to be human. Amidst the significant trials of 2020, the hope of the year lies in the ways it has brought out so much strength and generosity in humanity. Since 2014, every season of M Pavilion has opened with a contemporary composition by Deborah Cheatham in the language of the Bunwarong people, custodians of the land upon which we built the last six pavilions. This year, in composing her piece for 2020, Deborah sought to create a work dedicated to the resilience of the Bunwarong of, and of all the First Nations people as they draw strength from their land and from the knowledge and vision of their ancestors. Called Wurungi Bik, Strong Country, this instrumental piece performed by violinist Eric Wyatt carries Deborah's profound message of resilience and strength, a message that has great power for all of us this year. With the losses of 2020 have come some of the most moving and humbling gains bolstered communities, kinder attitudes, restored ways we interact, care, and simply, but perhaps most profoundly, a greater appreciation of each other, our families, our friends, and our loved ones. Whenever we've found strength in ourselves during this pandemic, it has come directly from our care of each other from generosity, kindness, and support. Like so many organizations across the globe, we asked ourselves, how do we best take care of our people during this time? For the foundation, an answer was already embedded into the ethos of M Pavilion. We knew that, although for the last six years, M Pavilion has been reborn and reimagined every season as a new and groundbreaking physical structure. M Pavilion itself, as a concept, an ideology, and as a cultural phenomenon, is so much more than just a physical structure. M Pavilion is, at its heart, a way of bringing people together. An architecture beyond the structure. We're celebrating today M Pavilion's ongoing legacy as a space that can adapt to the needs of the time in order to bring people together. That is precisely what this cultural laboratory has been designed for and what the challenges of 2020 have allowed us to realise. To live the reality of that idea of adaptation, to listen to the needs of our time and respond in a meaningful, effective and genuinely supportive way. Since 2014, M Pavilion has hosted well over 1,500 events, all thanks to the collective creativity of thousands of collaborators. This year, we look to the strength of our collaborators and the generosity of our vision of our partners to lean into all the challenges of 2020 and create our boldest, strongest program ever. My congratulations to Jen and her team. Over five months, we will stage in excess of 400 free talks, performances, workshops, and family activities, bringing energy and optimism to public spaces, showcasing the brilliance of our creative industries in a program featuring more than 500 designers, artists, musicians, architects and thinkers, to an immeasurably wider local and global audience than ever before. That such a radical adaptation has been possible is to me the real sign of M Pavilion's success as an outcome of the remarkable collaborative, co collective creativity of our collaborators 
who make a truly adaptable, responsive place of meeting, of sharing ideas, of coming together to develop ways of thinking and being in the world. Every month of each M Pavilion unfolds a new theme and the theme for November 2020 is re-emerge, a remix. It's a theme about processing and reconnecting, about taking stock of everything we've been through together over the last year and asking ourselves, where to from here? Initially online, we invite you to join us over the summer months as we establish a growing presence across Melbourne at the six M Pavilion structures in their permanent homes, as well as at repurposed urban spaces. Our program is rich with the kind of art, design, music, technology and architectural events that have made M Pavilion so beloved and so important in the city of Melbourne and beyond. And as always, every M Pavilion event is free and open to all. So come, immerse yourself in ideas, engage in rigorous discourse, listen, learn, share, discover and play. Thank you for celebrating the exciting M Pavilion 2020 season ahead with us tonight. I would now like to introduce Minister Pearson to officially open M Pavilion 2020. M Pavilion shines a light on the powerful role of design in shaping our communities and improving our lives. It celebrates change and adaptability, each year reimagining itself anew. Six years on, these things are more important than ever. Today, looking towards a COVID normal and post-COVID world, design will play a critical role as we continue to adapt the way we live and as we rebuild for the future. M Pavilion brings our design community together and provides a timely forum for debate, ideas and knowledge sharing. The 2020 program goes further than merely adapting to change. It embraces it as a catalyst for new opportunities. Our government is proud to again support this unique Melbourne institution and I offer congratulations to the Naomi Milgram Foundation and M Pavilion team. I'm particularly thrilled to see new opportunities and support being extended to Victorian creatives through M Pavilion's commissioning program. As our city reawakens, I look forward to joining you for a summer of creativity, connection and conversation. I wanted to just make a few reflections on the important role that the M Pavilion has played in Australia's emerging global conversation on the importance of design. Having had a role for six M Pavilion iterations, I think I've seen the conversation deepen and emerge in a really important way. Australia has become part of the global conversation on the importance that design plays in both sustaining and enhancing our cities. It's done so in a way that at the heart of it, the M Pavilion project has brought us into a global conversation. That has been really important over the past decade, but it is even more important now as we ponder what is the role of design in a COVID safe, COVID friendly new world of cities and designs. I wanna thank the role that uh, the Naomi Milgram Foundation has played together with corporate sponsors and to give out a shout to Creative Victoria for being such an important partner in the M Pavilion project. If the M Pavilion project was important pre-COVID, its centrality in making sure we have a design conversation and a design thinking for a better future is even more important now than ever. So can I thank everyone for their support of the M Pavilion and I look forward to its continuing role into the future. Architecture touches on so many different aspects of what it is to be human. It's culture and aesthetics, obviously, but it's also politics, economics, urban planning, landscape and history. It's helping us find our place in the world with a future that is very uncertain. But it is so important not to lose confidence in what that future could be. And for me, M Pavilion is a part of that. 
To me, M Pavilion is such a wonderful place because it nurtures community, collectivity, the coming together of people. M Pavilion to me utilizes all that is best from the knowledge and expertise and wisdom of the architecture and design world and uses that knowledge to build exciting, innovative and welcoming spaces where human beings can gather and flourish. M Pavilion is a wonderful gathering place where we can come together to celebrate our love of art, design, the built form and of course it's accessible to everyone and M Pavilion, using the existing spaces, provides a shining light on those people that make Melbourne so special. M Pavilion provides this, this moment in time every year where you can almost feel the creative energy vibrating out of it. For me personally, it also gives me this connection to the gardens and the civic spaces and, and, the, and the river and Bitterung over the summer period, um, which I just find to be so deeply satisfying. And I can't wait to get back there, um, not necessarily to the Queen Victoria Gardens this year, but back under the many incredible structures of M Pavilion around the city and, and getting back in to, to kind of claim our city and, and start to feel that creative energy once again in the heart of Melbourne. I'm really looking forward to that. In terms of how I feel, M Pavilion is supporting creatives and reviving art and design in the time of the pandemic. I actually think this is a really wonderful opportunity for everybody to go and visit the uh, previous M Pavilions in their new locations and to once again be inspired by the many great ideas and people that are brought together in this hub of Melbourne's community. This year in particular, the support of the M Pavilion team and the Naomi Milgram Foundation for local creatives such as ourselves has been a little ray of sunshine. One of the major things that has come out of the Melbourne COVID lockdown through all these months has been the quietness of opportunities. But the invitation to design a stool for this year's event season has been such a delightful pick me up and we've felt very supported. Thank you, M Pavilion. M Pavilion is one of the great assets in Melbourne's cultural calendar, connecting creative thinking, diverse voices, and really visionary architecture. And these all contribute to a dialogue about connecting people and place. M Pavilion reminds us that gathering and placemaking are important features of our society. They're the things that stitch our society together. And M Pavilion really creates this platform for the exchange of ideas. I've been listening to M Pavilion's amazing collection of extraordinary interviews, discussions, conversations, interrogations that have taken place over many years. And it's been an incredible reminder of how important these types of cultural exchanges are within the life of our city when we have such an engaged community. Having followed M Pavilion since the very beginning, I've always been impressed by it, not just as a presentation of innovative architecture, but as an innovative presentation of architecture uh, through its very robust series of talks, workshops, performances, and other forms of programming. It's a way of reinforcing the idea that architecture is, of course, not just about uh, materials and, and construction and form and fabrication, though those are important, uh, but more importantly perhaps it's about the people, ideas, communities and discussions that it brings together, that architecture is inseparable from what happens in and around it. These are questions that uh, all of us are sort of rethinking at the moment and with its uh, robust and, and, and thoughtful uh, approach, uh, it's very exciting to see how M Pavilion is adapting and will continue to adapt. So congrats uh, to a great run so far, and here's to much more to come. Thank you. To be in a place that um, has been framed by the experiments and the speculations of architects who've been welcomed to create this gift for Melbourne. And of course, this year will be a bit different. Uh, we're all rethinking uh, what gathering, what the public space uh, even means. But of course, that's what M Pavilion inspires for us every year to put ourselves um, in this 
place that uh, you know occupies a space in a garden that we pass by all the time occupies a space in our imagination um, but also allows us to occupy a space of ideas a space of contest and a space that broadens our horizons a lot of uh, creative people have lost a lot this year there's been a lot of things that have been cancelled um, you know a lot of people haven't been able to make work entirely which is really sad but I think it really shows the resilience that um, many of us are still able to get up and try something new and um, different a different way of thinking and approach what we do with like a fresh perspective and I definitely think that M Pavilion has done that and by providing this program for um, our locals and our local creators to be a part of it's heartwarming to see that they um, care about the community and they're willing to do what it takes to make sure things go ahead and that we can still make work and still enjoy the art that you know enriches our lives and that we all love. So thanks M Pavilion. Tandarum is a ceremony enacted by the nations of the Kulin people and other Victorian Aboriginal nations allowing safe passage and temporary access and the use of land and resources by foreign people. The parallels between the original custodians of this place and the philosophy of Emperor are amazingly aligned. Tandarum was more than a ceremony. It was a meeting of diverse peoples to discuss important issues of the day. This coming together and meeting is at the core of the Aboriginal culture and has been transported through tens of thousands of years to become the DNA of modern Melbourne. We love to come together in so many forms for eating, culture, public debate and sport. We do this in both enclosed spaces and out in the open. M Pavilion parallels this annual meeting and celebrates the coming together of creative and inquisitive people of great diversity in a temporary shelter, sheltered pavilion that touches the ground gently before moving on for another year. Well done M Pavilion on yet another amazing program for 2020. RACB is incredibly excited to collaborate with M Pavilion, bringing people together in Melbourne, regional Victoria and beyond. Since 2019, the partnership between M Pavilion and RACB has been a strong union of shared values around community, advocacy, creativity and collaboration. We can't wait to reconnect with our community, hear what's important to them and share some really exciting and new creative experiences along M Pavilion. Hello, I'm David Janotta. I'm one of the 2017 M Pavilion Architects. If you ask me what the M Pavilion means to me, I can only say it's a place of friendship. A place where I made many new friends and where I had many interesting debates about the city and art. A place that has become very dear to me. M Pavilion has become a place where the debate about the city and arts and culture in general can take place at all levels. The M Pavilion program has been proven to be very versatile over the years. I can't wait to see what this year will bring. My name is Chelsea Hickman. I am the artist and fashion designer who designed and made the uniforms for M Pavilion's 2020-2021 season. M Pavilion have set an example in their sustainability consideration for this project that will surely inspire other organizations to consider their environmental impact when creating staff uniforms. I think M Pavilion is innovative and fearless in their approach to knowledge sharing. And I think it's important for our city that M Pavilion continues to facilitate conversations around complex issues and future focused ideas. For me, M Pavilion is much more than a physical pavilion or a piece of temporary architecture. It's a place to come together, to encounter and exchange creative ideas. M Pavilion gives us an important way to test and explore new ways of living together. It's a public commitment of which we can all celebrate and it's never been more important than in the time of pandemic that we're currently in. So congratulations M Pavilion and I wish you all the very best for this year's program.
Thank <laughs> you.